the best power setting for micro welding. The number one question I get asked by anyone starting out in micro welding is what is the optimal power level, power setting to make sure that I get secure and consistent welds. And so in this episode, I am going to discuss exactly that. I'm going to be thorough in introducing the three main factors that will affect, that will impact your uh, power setting. And then we're going to talk about a little bit about argon gas versus no argon gas. And then I am going to show you how I have come up with the decision, what other criteria and what I have done to come up with the optimal weld. I hope you enjoy this. There are three major factors which impact your power setting choice. And these are the type of metal. Some metals are more conductive for electricity, while others might be more resistive. Number two, thickness of what you're trying to weld. Three, the condition of the electrode, how sharp or dull it is. Let's talk about the metals. Um, I'm going to focus only on permanent jewelry type of jump rings because that's what I've been asked mostly. And um, what I have is solid gold, 10 karat, 14 karat, gold filled, that's 14 karat gold filled, the American standard, um, that is 1 over 20, 14 karat gold as well as sterling silver. So today we're going to discuss that. We're going to do experiments and I'm going to demonstrate. I don't wholesale um, stainless steel. So I'm going to try to do some research, but for the experiment, I'm only going to be doing those metals that I've just discussed. And I will create a chart. Um, perhaps actually you could help out. If you could, um, anyone out there who know, who's had more experience uh, welding with stainless steel, please include the information below. That will help everyone. But meanwhile, I will create a chart later um, and add in the stainless steel when I can get access to some. Moving on to thickness. When discussing thickness, I will be limiting our discussion to gauges that are most popular for permanent jewelry, as well as some thicker sizes that might be used for rings and thin bangles. Micro welding is best suited for thinner gauge items because the penetration with arc pulse welding is limited in depth and thicker pieces are better soldered. For now, I will experiment on thicknesses between 26 gauge, which is about 0.4 millimeters, and up to 12 gauge, which is two millimeters. I will get some wire and try out other thicknesses to fill out my chart another time. Another factor that impacts how powerful the weld is, therefore the power setting, are the electrodes. So the tungsten electrodes, basically the sharper it is, the more powerful it is. And you will find that sometimes if you are welding for a long time without sharpening, what ends up happening is it becomes a little bit weaker and you have to turn it, the power setting a little bit higher. So the sharper it is, the more powerful, the duller it is, the less powerful and therefore you have to um, increase it. That is um, the rule of thumb. So for our experiment, what I've done is I have used brand new electrode. And then when I repeated the same experiment later, um, 
with one first without argon gas and the same with argon gas. When I switched to with argon gas, I also put in a new electrode. So I used new electrodes for the experiment and um, just to keep it apples to apples. And when I'm listing this, I'm listing with the electrode being prime condition. So if it is the case that you have a little bit duller or older electrode, don't just go by my chart. You might have to increase it a little bit. The definition of optimal or best power setting. I define optimal power setting as the power setting that you can weld with that gives you a consistent and secure weld while not over melting the metal. So for a jump ring, this would mean that it does not flat top or become too melty or out of shape. In my quest to come up with a chart for the optimal power settings for each type of metal and each thickness, I weld the jump ring and then try to break it open. I note the lowest power setting that I can successfully perform such a weld. And then I repeat the same weld with a new jump ring. And in this way, I know I can consistently replicate the result and it's not a fluke. Also, sometimes with shaky hands and fine wire, the weld might not be perfect and it's better to be able to get two samples and get an average idea of uh, the performance level. I then move using the same jump ring, but weld at a higher power level to see when the power becomes too much for the jump ring and it starts to get melty. I keep track of the results using <laughs> Tupperware with small compartments and labeling the power setting and the gauges. When the jump ring becomes too thick though, I notice that I must weld on more than one spot. And in that case, I note the number of welds I must make in order to prevent me from being able to break the weld with force. And that is part of the chart that I'm going to share with you. Now for the big reveal. I will include a link below to the power setting chart that I've created based on my experiment. It will bring you to my page that has other resources and product knowledge info that you might find useful. It's under free resources. But for now, I'm going to give you a quick summary. And in general, it is like this. Sterling silver welds at slightly lower setting than gold filled, which in turn welds lower than 14 karat solid gold and the highest being 10 karat solid gold that you need the power setting for. For example, for 26 gauge, which is 0.4 millimeters, a single secure weld can be achieved for silver at four to five watts. Both of them did not flat top. And for gold filled, the best is at five watts, 14 karat solid gold is at six watts and 10 karat gold at seven watts. For 24 gauge, silver is at five watts, gold filled at seven, 14 karat gold at seven watts also. It, it was hard to be very specific because the, the difference was um, for both seven and eight watts was very similar. And then at 10 karat, or 10 karat gold, the best is at eight watts. The other thing I found interesting was that at 16 gauge and up, I needed multiple welds in order for it to be secure. And I could not get a single spot weld uh, to be secure at any power setting. Welding with argon gas. I performed the same experiment welding with argon gas and a new electrode to compare. The findings were interesting. Aside from slightly less oxidation, I noticed that the weld result was straighter. Although at higher temperature, welding with argon still did flat top. 
it did not have the tiny divot that I saw without the argon gas. And also found that it can achieve a slightly more secure weld at the same power setting. So I stand corrected that there is no noticeable difference between the use of argon gas and not when welding fine gauges. I found that argon gas will allow you to achieve a stronger weld at the same power setting. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot achieve strong and secure welds without the use of argon gas. It just means you have to turn it slightly higher power. For example, for 26 gauge sterling silver without argon gas, I found that you need to weld at four to five watts to be consistently secure. Whereas argon, with argon, you could weld securely at three and a half to four watts. It's a matter of preference and, and convenience um, whether or not to use argon gas when welding. I'm going to film an updated um, review on that a little later. I hope you found that to be useful. I'm a wholesaler of premium quality chains and findings, as well as lots of jump rings. And I'm a dealer for Sunstone Micro Welders. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it really does help my algorithm and I appreciate the support. As well, if you have found certain things to be useful, please share that in the comments below. And also let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you.